Is it going? It says R E C. Oh yeah. Look at that. All right. <clears throat> How do we start this? Well, welcome. Wait, should we do the the, the original? Uh, well, take it away, Christine. Huh? <laughs> Well, if you are here on audio, you don't know what's going on. If you are here on video, you are as confused and probably upset as we are. And if you close out the tab, we do not blame you. So uh, we, this is only about 140 episodes late, but we are deciding to try going on YouTube with our, with our podcast. To be fair, this was not our idea. Okay, a lot of people have suggested this um, in our personal lives and otherwise and people who help work with us. So we're like, you know what? We'll just give it a shot to make everyone happy. And We've see. heard a lot of people prefer watching slash listening to their podcasts via YouTube. That's the youths, by the way. The youths, and we want to cater to the youths. We, sure, and, uh, we love the youths. And so we're doing our best. Um, for those listening, you cannot see this shoddy uh, makeshift setup we currently have. Uh, we've been saying all day that we feel like we are just starting a whole new podcast yeah. because when we started, <laughs> Uh, and that's why we drank episode one. Uh, it, it felt <clears throat> jarringly similar. <laughs> we did not know what we were doing. Now we've got a camera facing us. It's, I promise at some point we will probably <laughs> master it looking a little more professional. But I can't promise the same, but um, I'm glad so you can. We're doing our best here. And our best also includes, <laughs> I bought a really nice camera on the internet that was like, I Googled, what do vloggers use? Oh my God. You know, like not the youth. <laughs> like not the youth, right, right, right. Like right, adults right. catering like to the on Ask Jeeves. And um, it came back with this camera and I was like, great. And I have a tripod, we're good to go. Turns out I lost a little majingy for the tripod. And so I found a roll of duct tape. It's also very synonymous to our first Facebook Live. Oh, right. Because we had to balance our camera on a bag of a loaf of bread. Of bread. And we unfortunately, I ate the last piece of toast this morning. So all we had was duct tape. We got nothing. Listen, it seems to bode well for us that you appreciate the authenticity of our clumsiness. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. So we'll see after, the, after they third times the charm. It, they might be like, I, that's not what I meant. <laughs> for those who are watching and are privy to the YouTube world, please give us some pointers. Please. Or, Only nice ones. Or just points. Like however YouTube works, give us a few points. We need them. <laughs> we need as many points as we can get. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Um, cool. So I that mean, being said, we're going to pretend like this is a normal episode. Our manager says people want to watch this. <laughs> You're gonna find out quick <laughs> that he's wrong. <laughs> We're gonna see. I think they have that thing on YouTube where it's like average watching time. It's gonna be like three and a half minutes, right? And then end. I was also telling Christine like now I have. I used to come here looking pretty gross often, and now it's like oh I have to explain why I look certain ways. Do you understand that I have eyeliner on? That doesn't happen in a normal world. I'm wearing a shirt with Geo's face on it, dressed as Captain America. See? That's fun. But I also uh, for the people watching me, I have a massive dent in my head right now because <laughs> I stabbed myself with my car keys the other day. So You're really trying to win over the audio people, huh? No. Switch over to you. I don't even know who I'm catering to anymore, just the youth. <laughs> also, uh, for the video people, we're going to try to not edit this. Is this accurate? Yeah. So you're going to get all of the fun stuff, including every time Christine has to get up to make the dog leave, which yeah, is happening which right is now. Which is actually happening currently. Olive! So, um, I don't... They just don't want to edit video and audio or have Eva edit both. So um, so if you are listening to audio currently and you want all of the, quote, great things that happen behind the scenes. Authentic. Just go watch the YouTube video of the exact same thing. Come here, Olive. Come here, honey. Come here, little girl. Also, everyone can now see what Olive looks oh, yeah, like. Here she is. Hello. She's, Welcome, Olive. She's a little bean. Our first guest. Our first guest. <laughs> Oh, you're a star. Yes, you are. Oh, so sweet. Okay, honey, I'm going to kick you out to go find your daddy. She's a little wowie, a little chihuahua. Do you like her clitter clatter? Her her toes, yeah. Come her on. Little click clackers. Come on. <clears throat> Come on. Out you go. Nailed it. Nailed it. That was the first behind the scenes footage. Wow, for our, it happened a lot video. faster than we thought. It happened a lot. Not as, not as fast at all for me. I put an armadillo doorstop in front of the door, so hopefully it won't happen again. So uh, we are sorry in advance that this will probably be a little choppy, especially for the audio version, because we might be cutting things out and oh, it might yeah, not yeah. make sense because we're talking to our video. It, we're going to figure it out all together, it, just like the entire course of this That's career. That's true. Isn't this fun? It's been you? a journey for us. It will stay a journey for us because we keep trying to we'll never figure try it out. new things and we're always bad at it at first. Yes. So, that being um, said, we're going to try and do a normal episode. Yes. Try. 
try keyword. Um, okay. So that being said, do you have anything, anything we- I do. Oh. Have some announcements. Okay. What's well, that? Well, the first one is that, um, we have some, I have some new additions to my zoo at my home. Um, oh yes. Blaze's brother moved in with his dog, Tegan. And a lot of people on Instagram thought, oh, I got a new dog. I wish. She's really, really cute. She's precious. She's adorable. And she doesn't bark. I, she doesn't. But, um. The she, first of her kind here. I know. It's not going to last. <laughs> she was a bad influence. But uh, yeah, so she moved in and Jesse moved in and I'm really excited and we're gonna have a lot of fun in our large zoo. There's now three dogs and a cat. And how many humans? Oh God. One, four two, to five. Three, four, five. Four to five, yeah. I'm just estimating. Just like. I mean, six when Emma's here, it's a yeah. whole thing. And seven when Eva's here. Oh, true. Oh God. It's like 19 kids and counting. Yes, I should start our own, my own YouTube Except show. Except like 19 dogs and cats, <laughs> which is a better version. By the way, I did come here today and uh, I, was welcomed by just a parade of dogs. And it, it was, was a lot. It felt exactly like what I've been expecting You're at like, some point finally. in my life. I was like, I'm gonna go to the kitchen and I just had like 12 legs <laughs> just <laughs> running after me. It was great. That's a good math. Um, <laughs> I also wanted to tell you, a lot of people have been asking about like the weasels at my grandma's. I wanted to add, my brother uploaded a video of us in my grandma's haunted house mm -hmm. and we did like a little ghost hunt there. Mm -hmm. So that's on YouTube on our Beach Shoe Sandy channel and um, people went looking for the weasels. You can hear them, but you can't see them, but they're there. Um, it's called a haunting in Bavaria. And uh, oh, we have a new Patreon. Holy crap. Yes, we Speaking do. Speaking of video. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. So we uh, decided to be really ambitious in a one week span mm -hmm. time. With this video and many other things, we're trying to, I guess, we're having like a midlife crisis. I think that's what's happening. Yeah. We realize that it's been two and a half years and it's been great, but we don't want to get bored. We don't want you guys to get bored. We so we think you deserve more. We're trying our best here. So we, um, we are revamp rehauling, revamping our Patreon and it's already gone really well so far. We have like a bunch of new rewards, including, so we only have a $5 tier now to make it easier. So $5 across the board. Um, if you donate, you get access to our close friends list on Instagram, which I'm really excited about. We're going to start adding usernames today. Um, to our close friends list so you can see kind of behind the scenes stuff. We're posting more videos like um, our spirit box session in New Orleans is up there. Um, a bunch of other video content that we're trying to include. And We realize that we already film a lot of stuff on our phones yeah. and then kind of make a shared album for ourselves, for ourselves. but <laughs> nobody else gets to enjoy it. So it just, why not throw that your way? Yeah, and, and so we're trying to really get engaged on Patreon because there were a lot of people on there who were supporting us and we were like, we don't give you guys enough. We gave, we, not intentionally ended up with doing a lot of empty promises mm -hmm. and i think when we thought oh we'll do this we'll do that we didn't realize we were over promising right and then things just kind of got bananas and we were like it was like it fell to the wayside and we did. feel guilty about that so we're trying to do our best to so, become better people yeah if you want to sign up for that it's um patreon.com slash atwwd podcast i yes. think that's probably a thing i should know it is okay great um so if you want to do that and we're also working on some merch stuff that's t tbd we it's always say we're working on merch stuff we're actually like it's i wish we could talk to you about what's, what's going happening. on behind the scenes of merch it seems like it's such an easy thing apparently it's not we've learned that the it's a way. jigsaw puzzle but i mean even just for patreon we're working on like little merch stuff but i don't want to again over promise too soon but we're working on that merch things merch things um and i just really want quickly want to say thank you everyone who wrote reviews like we were trying to break 10,000 reviews on itunes for a long time and then last week i kind of made like a desperate plea after all the <laughs> gun, gun talk and all the negative reviews we got and you guys came out in full force we got like hundreds of reviews in a couple days time and we went way over 10,000 reviews and i'm so yeah thankful so thank you guys this has been a personal thing on christine's bucket list for a long time <laughs> like a crazy person i refresh itunes constantly so thank you that just was really nice to see and made me very happy also it's nice and just on a personal level to be sitting so close to you i know in case you're wondering this is not oh almost there's a lot of things on my face <laughs> no but try again i don't think you want my sweaty hand on you we uh usually christine sits across from me on the other side of the room like all the way across the room. This is probably the closest we've sat in a long time doing next to each other. The at only all. ever in our life. <laughs> at all. The only time we were closer recording was when we were in my childhood bedroom and we only had mm. the Zoom and we were laying down. Our faces were very close. Yes, that was quite a intimate. It was quite 
if, if teen Christine could look Fairness. into the future and be like, what is happening here? Listen, our faces were very close in your childhood bed. Oh, and dear. your mom was downstairs. It felt like high oh. school. And Eva was videotaping. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That felt like college. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we have fun. We have fun. We have fun. Um, God, I'm sorry. I have one more thing that I thought was funny on our... Oh, if you're on our Patreon, too, you get to join the... Uh, I know we closed our big secret group, but we have an ATWWD Patreon group, which is really fun, and people are really engaged on there, and like, we're, I'm on there, and it's a lot of fun. Um, so I saw somebody named Bradley posted in there and said, just finished episode 137, and I live in Round Rock, Texas. Oh, cool. I wanted to say that the Hairy Man Festival that M reference is not a Bigfoot festival, is actually just a celebration of hairy men. Oh. Like, legitimate contest about who is the hairiest man in town, and it's wild all in its own. So. I know someone who could compete in that. Who? You? Mm, I, no, fingers mm. crossed. <laughs> Someday. Um, uh, no, my one of my best friends back at home, um, her dad growing up literally had like a sweater for oh. hair, and during the summer he would make us like shear him. Oh! <laughs> oh, M, oh no. So I, I think he could compete. Yeah, it sounds like maybe. He was a, a very hairy man. Okay, well that seems like so what that That's my like. connection to that. So yeah, well there you go. Fun Game fact over. of the day. Game over indeed. <laughs> Okay. Also, yeah. I have no updates, except tomorrow we are going to be in Salt Lake. <gasps> tomorrow, oh god. LOL. Uh, LOL, LOL, LOL. Still haven't finished our notes I, yeah, for those. Either of so. us. But I know what I'm doing and I'm so excited about my story, so at least there's that. I don't know what I'm doing. But yeah. when do we? Yeah, what, at all. Can you see that? that that's what's happening? Half the fun is not knowing what's going to come out of my mouth because I don't know what's going to come yeah, out of Yeah, isn't that great? It's I, a journey for us all. Our, our business manager was like, you guys need insurance. I was like, you're right. The things that come out of your mouth. And it's called like errors and omissions. Uh -huh. It's not like we don't, it's not like we make errors ever. No. Not even a little bit. What's no. salt? Chalk? Chalk? <laughs> what if someone sued us over that? A scientist might. <laughs> it might. All right. Uh, I don't have any updates. I think that's all I had. Um, I'm just really, there's a lot going on and I'm really excited about it. So we're going to see how this YouTube goes. Um, Hopefully it goes all right. Yeah, I'm just gonna pretend like. Let's just do what we did with the when we started the podcast. And we're like, oh, just our moms are gonna watch it. Oh yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, just Linda. And then we're surprised when like there's a third. A third I feel like our parents thing. remember that when we first started the podcast, everyone was like, all the grown-ups in our lives were like, I can't see the video. I can only hear it well, now. 140 episodes yeah. later, now you can. My mom's gonna call me like, you finally figured it out. <laughs> okay, Two and a half years later, I fixed it. It was a it was a bug in the system. Listen, if my 14 year old sister watches this, I will be pleased. Like I've accomplished something in my life. So oh, good. Let's hope. Uh, all right. So let's let's try this. Remember that time I said we don't know uh, what's gonna come out of my mouth. Yes. We're gonna try that now because this is a story from a few months ago. And I haven't even tried reading the notes to fill myself in. Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound like a really interesting ride? I hope this is no one's first episode and they're like, wow. Whew, this is someone's first YouTube episode. Oh, God. They're going to be like, what is going on? Hi, we're in That's Why We Drink. Um, oh, welcome to our podcast on TV. It's, um... How do we explain it? There's milkshakes and ghosts and lemons involved. There were milkshakes at one point. There was wine at one point. We, still, there were, you know what there. used to be there? It was milkshake facts. Yeah, remember that? It lasted eight episodes. <laughs> Go back to the very early ones when we were as awkward as this video oh, thing. Oh, oh, and there's Gio. Sorry. And uh, you'll see what bulk shake facts were. It didn't work out. It's funny, you can always tell who's new to the show because they say, they're like, I have a fun milkshake fact for you. And it's like, oh. I'm like, that's, I in, bet you do. In two episodes, you'll realize that's, that's a no-go. <laughs> it's kaput. All right, so this is my live show from Wisconsin. Oh. Um, and I actually, we just had our Facebook Live episode that we did this weekend, last weekend? Yes, a few on days Sunday. Ago. And um, someone actually mentioned this story. I forgot that I had covered it. Yeah, they like requested it. Yeah, they were like, oh, you should do this story. And I was like, oh, I already have notes for that, so I'm just gonna do that. And since we're going to Salt Lake and clearly aren't prepared, Fully, uh, we decided nope. we would um, use some old notes that everyone has since forgotten about. Yay! And Unless you're from Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, was it Madison or Milwaukee? Here's the thing. I can't tell you that. I don't know. Oh, oh okay. I thought you meant you can't tell me for like... Oh, no. I can't tell you because I didn't write it anywhere. Destin. Well, I um, also... You didn't know which one it was and I didn't know which one it was, so I just also picked a random Wisconsin show. So oh. It could be... It could be a mix and a match. Mix and match. Um, also, the shows were really small there. True. So, like... If True. You, if you have heard that, it, I'm sorry, but... One of those Wisconsin shows was the show where you flashed everyone, right? Okay, well, I thought that was going to be contained in the comedy club, but... No. Um, what goes on YouTube stays on YouTube, <laughs> don't you know? Apparently. 
after the first Madison show. Oh God, oh God. And like- You wanna tell the story? It wasn't necessarily that you mooned everyone, it's like you sunnied everyone. You Ooh, know? <laughs> that's so much worse. Yeah, Eva uh, texted me the next morning and was like, hey, I don't, or no, not even, like 10 minutes before we left for the next day show. And was like, I'm so sorry. I don't really know how to tell you this. This is really awkward. And I was like, what happened? Like she, she's gonna quit or something. I know, I thought like I, I accidentally fired her. I don't know. And she was like, so you were wearing those leggings yesterday and um, you kind of had a camel toe <gasps> and everyone could see it. And uh, I didn't know how to tell you. And you guys just kind of did the whole thing and nobody said anything. And I was like, oh my God. She goes, I just wanted to let you know, I like didn't want to tell you, but in case you wanted to wear those leggings again. And I was like, I'm never <laughs> wearing those leggings again. Can you imagine being our assistant? Oh God. I mean, this this is what happens when Eva isn't around. This would probably be a thousand times better. Oh God. But can you imagine having to be like, oh, I have to go tell my boss that they have a camel toe. In front of 400 people. And so <laughs> then the next day, of course, I'm like so fucking awkward that instead of being like, okay, just wear jeans and be normal. I was like, guess what I did to half of you who came to the show yesterday. Yeah. And you remember of, when you saw my sunny side? <laughs> it's like, like, you're so ashamed you can't keep it in. Oh God. You just have to keep talking could, about I, it. And that's why it keeps happening here. I'm like, I'm like to bring it up really a lot. Um, and yeah, so here we are. So anyway, um, this is not the story of Christine's camel toe because you just got that. That would be quite a horror story though. Um, so here's a different one. This is a cryptid, mm. um, which apparently everyone there seemed to already know. So I did a good job in, in, Pick in some there. part of Wisconsin. <laughs> good. Uh, this is in the town of Rhineland. Okay. Or yeah. Okay. Sounds, See, sounds is it, good. doesn't this sound confident already? Yes. This is the story of the Hodag. Ooh. So uh, <clears throat> this, I remember being one of my favorite cryptids I've done. I remember being just wildly ridiculous. So let's find out together. I'm very excited. <laughs> I was also sick during these shows. So I think I was in oh. a fever state. So I'm not even going to remember. I mean, between, maybe that's why you thought those leggings looked good. <laughs> also, the duct tape is falling. Do you guys, oh. Look at that change up. For those who are listening via audio. Oh dear. Christine tried, to, oh my God, this is so. Oh dear. Is everyone on YouTube going for a ride right now? Are you gonna throw up? Okay, here we are. Uh, for those who are listening to audio, the camera pointed at us was slowly just falling, <laughs> falling Drooping. down. And so Christine had to readjust, but I'm sure that'll have to happen again. Yeah, bit, my so. bad. Um, <clears throat> okay, the whole dag of Rhineland. Hodag is spelled H-O-D-A-G in case you're interested. And apparently it is known as, quote, the terror of the pine forests of northern Wisconsin. Ooh. Ooh, ah. ah. Um, so the story's main character, which is something I literally wrote in these notes, is a land surveyor named Eugene Shepard. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a so far I'm doing good. protagonist. Um, so Eugene was born on March 22nd, 1854. So he's an Aries. That's great. Aww. And uh, he was born in Old Fort Howard, which is now known as Green Bay. And I'm sure everyone freaked out. I'm Packers! Awesome. Something you like that. You were also wearing a cheese tie. So like... Oh, that was a good day. You're right. I was wearing a, bo a cheese bow tie. And Em didn't understand that it had to do with sports. So that was questionable. No, I just saw... Everyone's like, Em's a Packers fan. I'm like, what's a Packer? And I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> I was like, I just wanted... I just wanted my cheese bow tie. <laughs> Um, so his family moved to New London, um, and he left school in sixth grade to work on his father's farm. And then his dad died when he was 12. So he ended up being hired on as a farmhand in other towns. Okay. So by the time he was 12, he was out of school. He was just working on farms. At 16, he became a timber apprentice in the Northwoods, and he learned to be a timber cruiser, which apparently is another phrase for a land looker. Um, which is another phrase for... Uh, for checking out land. <laughs> oh, okay, got it. So he would apparently, uh, I wrote it down because I knew I'd forget if I ever went back to these notes. Thank you, past him. <laughs> um, so a land looker, they calculate the value of how much lumber is actually in an area based on how many trees are there. So they oh, go okay. and literally look at the land, mm -hmm. count all the trees, and they say, oh, you could get this much lumber out of it, or this much timber out of it, and that, this is how much money you would make. Oh, okay, that sounds like a cool complicated job. job. Um, so in 1882, Rhinelander was, oh, so the town is not Rhineland. Apparently it's Rhinelander. I'm stupid. Good start. I must have deleted we're not, the R at some point. Glad we're not editing this. <laughs> this was the dumbest thing we've ever done, is, is decide to make video content and, when, and not edit it. When you say was, you mean is currently the dumbest <laughs> thing we are ever doing. Let's yes. hope we never do anything stupid ever again. Yeah, let's hope. So in 1882, Rhinelander was uh, looking for timber and lumber workers and Eugene moved there permanently. So he moved to Rhinelander. 
in 1893, he was working in the woods outside of Rylander and he comes across his first hodag. Uh-oh. So in the Near North newspaper report, um, and there were other stories that also reported on this, this is how the hodag is described. Because I guess this made the papers, why wouldn't it? So this is how the hodag was described. And it, it looks like it's quite a long description. So bear with me, but the more detailed, the better, maybe. <laughs> okay, maybe. According to several articles, the hodag looks like, and has, a large head of a frog. <laughs> good start, good start. The grinning face of a giant elephant. Huh? Uh, thick short legs, a dragon's body, the back of a dinosaur, and a long tail with spears at the end. I'm not done, before you make a comment. Um, spikes all the way down its entire length of its body with a fistful of needle-sharp pointed spears at the end of his tail, fangs that would rival a saber-toothed tiger and could rip out the belly of the biggest bear. Apparently it has horns that are growing from its temples with large fangs and green eyes. That's nice. Oh, pretty. <clears throat> uh, short black green hair. I don't know what makes what? it black or green. <laughs> Uh, and its back is covered with spikes, it has tusks, it has needle-sharp claws, and it smells, apparently, like, quote, buzzard meat and skunk perfume. Mmm, my favorite. Apparently, it's known to breathe fire and smoke. It eats water snakes, oxen, mud turtles, and mainly white bulldogs. What? That's not very nice. You know what we need is a whiteboard, so I can just sketch this. Uh, wait a minute. Go. If we're talking visuals, that Come is a on. genius idea. I mean... We what did the what did the YouTubers say? Put it in the comments. Oh yeah, leave your comment below, and then we put a cool little arrow, and then also we this say, is humiliating. click here to subscribe. I am twenty seven years old. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I like what you see. Okay. Which you don't. So don't finish that sentence. <laughs> don't finish. If you don't like what you see, please just leave. Just don't, just... don't leave a comment because. Yep. Sticks and stones, but except the opposite of except that. Except our bones are constantly being shattered <laughs> by all of your mean words. Words always hurt me. Words hurt us worse than any sort of <clears throat> physical We're injury. Gemini's, so if you're not saying nice things, just don't talk to us. Listen. Okay. Uh, so everything he's described so far reminds me of when Michael Scott is in that he's trying to describe like like the bottom of a platypus <laughs> yeah. with the face of an egret or something. <laughs> it sounds kind of a little Michael Scott. -y. Okay, um, I like it. Apparently he's known to be, quote, a terrible brute with the strength of an ox, the ferocity of a bear, and the cunning of a fox. Oh no. It was also rumored that the hodag was the, res the resurrection of a dead oxen in the lumber industry, which I- Sorry, what? Was an ox working in, was he a landlooker? And he was resurrected? <laughs> that is the weirder part, yeah. A little bit. <laughs> I thought maybe I misunderstood. He was called the fiercest, strangest, most terrifying monster ever to set this earth. So a lot of superlatives going on here. It's very, um... It's like top in the charts. Sensationalized. Oh yeah, yellow journalism. Yellow, there it is. There it is. Uh, others have described the Hodag as a reclusive woodland creature and misunderstood by many, which is what I call Christine, so... <laughs> Interesting. You're such an ass. I, I call you the first part. Oh, just a reclusive woodland creature? No, the monster that eats bears or whatever oh, the fuck. The, the cunning of a fox, thank you. Well, sure. Um, no, the part about the skunk and the, yeah, yeah, the I, buzzard meat. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I was hoping that was next. <laughs> I put that on my uh, Tinder profile. They were okay. going to say my tombstone. I was like, don't worry, I've already planned out your tombstone. <laughs> anyway, go on. Does, does it just say Christine did it? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oopsies. I knew I shouldn't have done that. Um, okay, so... Basically, he's a seven foot long lizard-like beast covered in spikes. At the end of the day, I tried to just make it easy for everyone. Got it. A big weird lizard. And maybe has an elephant face. And, but grinning. Oh <laughs> dear. Um, so anyway, that is what Eugene apparently stumbled upon and lived to tell the tale. Oh my. Um, so when Eugene and his workers came across this hodag, they tried everything to capture it. I don't know why you don't try everything to get away to from get it. To get away? But apparently they tried to capture it. So when it fought back, they ended up retaliating again, this time bringing hunting dogs and guns. They Not just guns like rifles, but they also brought um, squirt guns of poison water, which I, I don't know how they found that. First of all- And the squirt guns so fast. Did squirt guns exist back then, A? I don't know how to I give mean, you they, that answer. They must have. Maybe, I don't know. Super soaker. I don't think they had the super soaker. 
They might have just, just like the tiny little pistol ones. Yeah, just like a, like a like a clown gun. Oh yeah, you know all about that. I would. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I imagine that's where the first squirt gun came from, like a faux gun. I also yeah. I also like that it's poisoned water. It's not like full of poison. It's like specifically poisoned water. Yeah, it's just diluted poison. Oh my. Um, so none of them actually got the hodag to stay away. So they kept fighting and they ended up resorting to dynamite because the diluted poison wasn't enough. And so they blew it up. They just blew up this hodag. What the fuck? A picture of the remains of the hodag was actually sent to the media and released to the public. Oh my. And three years later in 1896, Eugene came across the hodag again. And like a, like a totally different one. So they thought they blew up the only one in existence. It ended up being one of many. Uh oh, there's more to speak of. Mm hmm. And so Eugene found one sleeping in a cave. So he. How does he keep finding these things? Stop he, it. Why just him specifically? I don't know. Why is nobody else it's a seeing fishy. these? Fishy. Wolf, little lizardy. Little yeah. lizardy. So Eugene rallies the other men together to help him drag it into a large pit. No. Oh, so they can capture it. Let him take his nap. Listen. Maybe if he sleeps as deep as me, he they could probably <laughs> get notice. it done. <laughs> uh, so to do so, to bring to drag him into this pit. They tied a sponge soaked in chloroform to a long pole and then fed it through the cave <laughs> to get to him. So he it would be like pressed right up against his little booper, his little nose. Aww. And he'd breathe it in and he would just kind of fall asleep more. Okay. Go unconscious. Wait, okay. Oh, do you have why, a question? Why, why would I ask a question? Let's hear it though. I mean, I have a lot, but... but Where are they getting all of these? That's one of them. They got... Poison water, they got squirt guns in the 1890s. They've, They've got chloroform. Like long poles full of that sponge poles with chloroform. This is quite uh, elaborate. I mean, I guess we have a camera tape, duct tape to a tripod, so. That was, this was just their version of that. Potentially yeah. a loaf of bread somewhere involved. So, I mean, I guess we At shouldn't judge, but. Uh... At this time, the town of Rhinelander was trying to bring in more people and keep the town alive. And Eugene decided, to, uh, or I'm sorry, so the town wanted to like bring more people in, and so they ended up to create tourism. Um, they created the, oop, I don't know how to pronounce this, Juanita, or Juanita. Oh, Juanita. Let me look at it. Juanita. Oh, Oneida. Okay, Oneida. Thank you. Uh huh. Um, we didn't have the audience scream in our faces like they usually do, yeah. which we appreciate, by the way. We appreciate you screaming at us on stage <laughs> with our, all of our anxiety. Um, so the town created the Oneida. On <laughs> county fair uh, to attract tourism, and uh, only months. This happened only months after Eugene actually captured the hodag, which he did with the, the sponge thing. Sure, 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 sure. So he decided to rent a tent at the fair, and he was like, "Oh, here's this thing I chloroformed and dragged into a pit. <laughs> Let me showcase it to the town." And it ended up being the most popular attraction at the fair that year. Aww. So it went so well that Eugene ended up quitting his job and went around the country showcasing the hodag at all the fairs he could find. Wow. One of those fairs was even the Wisconsin State Fair in Madison and everyone freaked what? out. I'm assuming I told oh, the story in Madison. In Madison. Okay, we're For... figuring out slowly where we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, after being an exhibit all over the county fair circuit, um, he ended up, Eugene started selling tickets out of his own home. So even when it wasn't fair season, he was like, oh, well, I'll, uh, you can still give me money and I'll show like you this thing. People, weird people who put like roller coasters in their backyard and they're like, Come yeah, and pay a quarter to ride my roller coaster. And I would do it is the problem yeah. with that. You would do it. And that's why your tombstone will say, oops, <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have done that. I knew YouTube was a bad idea. So, uh, for a dime, apparently, and that, a dime back then. So I'm sure it was more money than that. What a steal. <laughs> For a dime, uh, people could see the hodag, which he kept in his back shed. Um, doing this alone with, in, in the money that he had at the time. So a dime in that time, he still made $500 of that time per weekend. Whoa, it was one weekend? It, it, approximately 5,000 people were coming per weekend. You're gonna find me a hodag. Oh. I remember what happened during the show. I was like hallucinating because I had a fever and I kept thinking you were saying ho daddy and I thought it was some weird prank that you were pulling on me. You were ill. You were I remember ill. you were like, oh, a ho dag. And I just started laughing, laughing. You're like, what? And I was like, a ho daddy? Is that really what they call it? Is that where, did you also say I need to get myself a ho dag? 
here and you said ho daddy or something it was something like that that sounds right. that's why it kind of triggered that memory yes for fifteen thousand dollars a week you could have yourself a little ho it's daddy ho daddy so the ho dag uh got so popular that i mean he was this guy was making so much money showing them this big lizard elephant thing <laughs> and he got so popular that scientists from the smithsonian actually said that they were going to come see him because they were like cool oh. how do we make it not stop not Stop was there a time was there a time mark maybe like maybe after half an hour it stops maybe well this is gonna be fun for audio was this good for you sinking the you audio too. god damn it <laughs> uh for those of you who are listening via audio the camera just shut off halfway so. it said we are recording and then it just said goodbye is that implying that it was not recording this in the beginning it said recording until it didn't okay well we'll find out that's gonna be really fun um I hope you're listening through Spotify. <laughs> I hope you're okay. just like, forget, forget these fools, I know better. Okay, so here we go. So uh, the so where I left off was that the Hoda got so popular that scientists from the Smithsonian said that they were gonna come and see this thing. Right. Um, so when this happened, it was serious enough that Eugene admitted that the monster was a hoax. <gasps> He's like, the Smithsonian's gonna find me He was out. like, I'm in big trouble. So he made it all up? So the first time Eugene came across the Hodag, the dynamite slash water pistol experience, um, poison water yeah, pistol, yeah, yeah. the charred remains that ended up getting released in the newspapers were fake. Oh. But the second time the story, well, the story was also fake, but the, the monster that was on display at fairs, apparently it was actually just a combination of wood and ox hides for the body with real horns from other animals and claws that he had made from bent rods. And at the fair and in his shed, it, th that same thing made of wooden oxides, it was um, connected to wires. Oh my. And he always kept the tent really dark. Excuse me. Usually we edit this stuff out, but everyone that's watching, you welcome watch to my heartburn. And acid reflux in action. <laughs> um, so uh, this big thing that he had created uh, to look like the Hodag, it was connected to wires in a very dark space and he would pay his sons to go behind the shed when people were looking Aww. at it to pull the wires and make it growl and make it look like it was moving. Interesting that he always described it as a lizard and then it sounds like everything he used to build it makes it look nowhere near reptilian. Yeah, there's no scales involved or anything. Yeah, like wood. I guess if it, if it, the tent is dark enough, you know? I wonder how he made the grin. Ooh. Spooky, huh? I don't know. Just drew it on with a Sharpie maybe. Or like a, some bars of soaps. Just like, <laughs> I, uh, that's, Kind of horrible. Oh yeah. Well, it was kind of a shitty person. Um, so people were already skittish. So whenever, uh, basically when he would pay his sons to move the animal quote around, people were already kind of like nervous to go in and even see this thing. Um, but the second it moved, they just ran away. So, so there was no like analysis. Basically. Yeah, there was no, there was no one like staring at this thing. It was once it moved, they were scared. And just you and I off. would have been the most gullible. We are the most gullible people. We would have been just like, engrossed in all of I've this. I've been like, this is amazing and wow. terrifying. This is great. I don't even care that it's made of barbed wire. And someday we should make a podcast about it. A thousand percent. Okay. Uh, so, oh, the thing is tipping. Oh, hey. You can't even see my glasses if I'm sitting up straight. Oh my goodness. It's okay, they're here for my voice. You know what's fun about this being such a terrible setup right now? What's that? Is that one day when we nail it, the contrast will be just explosive. It's gonna explosive. It's yeah, just gonna be sure. so wonderful. We're gonna be like, oh, remember when? Way back when? Well, I hope because that seems to be what happened with the podcast. So hopefully, if we're it's just anything like that. Let's just repeat history. It clearly went well the first time. All right, reinventing the wheel. There it is. So, uh, yeah. So it went. They went so far at one point to even Eugene went so far as to wear a suit and walk into the shed, and then his sons behind the shed would make awful noises as if the beast was moving around and then he would run out with the clothes shredded so he would intentionally go in <laughs> looking nice <laughs> and that was if people said like oh we really want to see it and he would just walk in to no. check on it to see if it was awake and then he would run out with his clothes all tattered and he'd be like oh no like it's not in a good mood <laughs> give me my my dime yeah he would say i quote i'm really sorry i can't show you the hodag today he's just not viewable today he's angry that's what i say about christine too <laughs> She's she not needs to be behind closed doors for the afternoon. So it was later published that Eugene had conned people before, um, and he would sell things like moss to people. 
When I was little, I sold rocks to people and I told them they were geodes. I was kind of like a, a Maybe you were monster. right. You just didn't crack it open. That's what I said. I that's said, half of the adventure. But that's the moral thing that I did to myself because my Catholic brain was like, you're doing a lie. <laughs> and then my, my sneaky little Gemini brain was like, but it could be a geode. But you don't know. Who's to say? And so I would go around and sell them for $5. And the only reason people bought them is because I would bang on their door for hours and hours until finally they were like, okay, just take like, take $5. I don't want your rock. You know, in middle school, me and one of my best friends, we started a locker cleaning business, but oh. we did it just so we could be nosy enough to look through everyone's shit. Now that's it. That was the game changer. And then we also had um, a teacher who I can now say her name was Miss Wood. I am allowed to say this because now she has passed on and they can't fire her for this information, oh. but she was our home me. And she was- Your ho dag. Our ho dag. And she uh, was probably equally as fed up with that school as we were. And we, me and my friend from that we had the locker cleaning business, we always got picked up last for some reason. And sometimes like we would have sports games or something. We would just get stuck at school for hours. She would <laughs> not encourage, but she would imply that if we did this, she wouldn't <laughs> tell anybody. And so we would go into other people's lockers and steal their food. And then she would oh go, my God. and then she would go into the teacher's lounge and steal other teachers food. Oh yeah. That's... And then we would all sit and have a picnic together and we would gossip about the faculty and the students. Yeah, that other. is primo. You need someone like that on your side. There were times where she would get me out of class saying like my mom was on the phone. Oh my. Just cause I, she knew I didn't want to go to the class. It was, what she was, gem. listen, she was the number one. Ugh. Anyway, R.I.P. Miss Wood. Get yourself a good hoe dad, guys. Get yourself a Sue Wood. So, Sue Wood. Uh, Cause Sue Wood, you know, cause she'd Sue help you. Sue Wood help you. Wow, that was clever. Thank you. You're listen, welcome. it only took me, what, 10 years? Yeah, you got there. Oh my goodness, where am I in the world? Oh yeah, so he's selling moss to people. Um, Which, I'm 100% on board with that. I would have probably bought it from him. I have pulled so much shit like that. Uh. He even once used to put soap in his mouth when creditors would come to his place so he looked rabid. <laughs> so I told you he had those bars of soap. You were right. For the you teeth. said that and I knew soap was coming Whoa. up. Oh, I tell you, he and I were kind of one in the same. Yeah. I shouldn't judge. So he knew that he was doing some stuff and he knew how to keep it quiet if he needed to, even if it meant eating soap. He's on it. So in response to people asking how everyone believed that this monster could exist, yeah. Because a lot of people would be like, why on earth is this? Why did the whole town just think this was real? And what did Em and Christine say in defense of themselves and their gullibility? So here's the defense. Uh -huh. This was a, quote, uh, a time of scientific exploration and inquiry. Um, a lot of animals at this time were being discovered. Okay, that's fair. So it's not hard to believe that there's this massive lizard no one has ever heard of before that has just been discovered. Like out in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've talked about that, how people literally didn't believe gorillas were real because it was we such did an say that, yeah. odd concept. Yeah. Yeah. Like how, what, why would you or believe like it? Or giraffe. why would you believe like, it? Oh, it has just this giant long neck, but it looks like a horse. But, yeah. I mean, it sounds absurd. So who knows? Also, people at the time didn't travel like we do today. So if people uh, far away from Wisconsin were hearing like, hey, there's this animal in Wisconsin, they'd be like, oh, I believe that, but I'll never see it because I'm not there. So sure, sure. a lot of people were like, maybe it's just a local to that area yeah. and I'll never see it. But if everyone's saying they've seen it, then it must be real. Right, right. So at the same time that Eugene was pulling this off in the 1890s, the town of Rylander was uh, struggling to keep up and they were trying to bring in um, more people into the city. Mm -hmm. So Eugene ended up incidentally promoting Rhinelander with this creature. Right. So people wanted to see the Hodag and maybe even if people didn't believe it in Rhinelander, they were like, well, we're not going to say anything because it's yeah. generating like, like a profit for us. Like Mothman kind of point pleasant. This is a quote. Not only hundreds, but thousands of people came to view the Hodag and not one of them went away without having learned a little more about Northern Wisconsin. Aww. And it's safe to guess that each one of those thousands told others what they had seen and heard. In this way, the beauties, opportunities, and resources of Northern Wisconsin spread and many who came out of curiosity only have come to make their home with us. Aww. Long live the Hodag. Long live the Hodag. And that was a quote from Eugene himself. So uh, yeah, okay. Well, this motherfucker so, has no room to be like, I increased tourism. It's like you made money off a bunch of. So he has no shame in what he's done no. because he likes. I think he takes all the credit Pretty for much, the reason why Northern Wisconsin even is still around. Much today. like Christine, he found some moral ambiguity and he ran with it. Yeah. <laughs> 
There might be a geode in this. We there, don't know. The hodag is the geode. There's a geode inside there somewhere. Yeah. If you look closely in your heart, you'll find it. So in 1923, Eugene died at 69 of kidney failure. Failure. Uh -huh. um, but thanks to Eugene and the hodag, the town of Rylander is still popping. Um, and they're proud to claim the Hodag. Apparently Rylander is nicknamed the Hodag City, or home of the Hodag. Home of the Hodag. I What's like up? that. Home yeah. of Hodaddy. Yes, yeah, see there, there it is, it fits. And there is a, a logging museum that sells lots of Hodag souvenirs, which we should have gotten when we were there. Yeah, wait, that... <sighs> you were sick, so we had to get out quick. We... yes. We'll go back. Okay, we'll be back for cheese curds and, and beer. Hodag souvenirs. I was sick. I couldn't enjoy the beer, the cheese curds. I had a really hard. hard it must time. have been a really bad cold for Christine to avoid beer and cheese. Was How that? sad is that? We gotta go back. I mean, it was. Everyone remembers my fluorida. Fluorida. And this was her Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, yeah. And then Eva had her Nash ill. <laughs> Nash ill. Oh, that one's just so sad. Poor Eva. She kept. She was trying to be so brave, and she was like, <clears throat> "I'm fine." <clears throat> I'm fine. And we were like, Eva, just go. We're like, sit your ass down. Go to sleep and come back to tea. us tomorrow. And then in the morning, she was like, hi, guys. And I was like, okay, Eva, you're, you need to just sit down. <laughs> Eva was like, yeah, I'm a little sick, but I think I'm fine. We were like, we're going to get on the plane and bring you home to John. Like, Eva, we're going to give you six times the amount of NyQuil that you're supposed to be on. And just ride it out, girl. Your cats are waiting. They will come for you. So uh, the logging museum does sell souvenirs, and the entire town actually has Hodag banners, flags, signs, and Hodag is now the mascot of Rylander High School. And I want to move there and have children and make them go to that school. And the it's also the official symbol of the entire city. Yes. Um, one of the most popular postcards there is actually the picture in the news article <gasps> of the, the Hodag's capture. We got to go back and buy this So shit. even though it's fake, it is like the story behind mm -hmm. it. Um, that everyone loves. Yeah. Rhinelander Cha Chamber of Commerce has also trademarked Hodag, TM, 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 um, and has created their own statue outside of the Chamber of Commerce building. They also uh, have two more inside. One is, quote, a life-size replica from 1951. Nice. And one is a smaller faux taxidermied Hodag. Okay. Faux taxidermied. So That's kind of cute. Didn't even know I needed that, but I have it now. But we need it. There is another, actually, at Rhinelander Ice Arena with an oversized head that blows smoke and lights it, and its eyes light up red. <laughs> is it like a Zamboni? I, it's kind of like a some sort of <laughs> animatronic, yeah. I'm very happy about that. Apparently in town, people actually blame bad luck on the hodag, so golfers and fishers, um, if something ever happens, they just are like, oh, that's the hodag. Oh, there he is again. It's not my shitty golfing, it's just you the You just hodag. threw me in the sand trap again. So the Rhinelander also hosts an annual music festival called the Hodag Country Festival, which, wow, we got it. What? Girl. When is that? I don't know, but we're going. Okay, well, we're buying tickets. And uh, so and even A-list musicians like Garth Brooks and Toby Keith have performed there. So it's like, Whoa. oh, it's a real deal country festival. Yeah, let's go. Um, and small statues of the Hodag have been given to the world leaders when they're in town, including <laughs> JFK in 1959. Can you imagine the honor, though? Can you imagine if you went... As a like a, an esteemed A-list celebrity or like like world leader, and you're like, but like, here's a little hodag so for you. That must be such a beautiful moment. I'm like tearing up just thinking about it. There's also apparently a hodag sandwich that are in many restaurants. Doesn't um, sound appetizing based on the smell you described, but it smells like skunk perfume and mm. old meat or something. Buzzard meat. <laughs> yes. Uh, the hodag is also mentioned in several Paul Bunyan stories. Well, that's cute. Interesting. Do we know what the sandwich is made of? I'm kind of hung up on that. No, but I can look it up. I'll look it up at the end of the story. Okay, okay. The hodag is also uh, a villain that in the Scooby Doo episode, The Hodag of Horror. Aww. Sweet. That is sweet. I haven't. I don't remember that one. And it's also featured in an episode of uh, the Travel Channel series, Mysteries at the Museum. Love it. It is best featured in Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Oh, okay. Um, some historians have suggested that the Hodag might actually have been a real creature. Hang in there. The Hodag strongly resembles the Native American creature Michi Michipeshu. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Michipeshu. A.K.A. the Water Panther. Okay. So apparently they do sound very similar. So even though... Eugene admits that he never saw a hodag. He might have used his description inspired by the Michi Peshu. Got it. Oh, got it, got it, got it. So it's known as the water panther or the water or a great lynx. 
So it's a panther, a lynx, a lizard, an elephant, and a skunk, and also a And buzzard. also just a bunch of like ox hides. Yes. And some soap is stuffed in its mouth. And some moss on top for garnish. <laughs> oh no. Um, so it's known as the water panther or the water lynx or the great lynx. And it is the apparently most important water being among the Great Lakes tribes. Okay. Fun fact, okay. Because it is the quote great underground wildcat or the great underwater wildcat. I just Ooh. I don't understand. It's fine. <laughs> um, it's a cross between a cougar and a dragon. Oh uh, well. I mean, why am I surprised anymore? It apparently roars and hisses before storms or rushing rapids to warn you. Okay, that's kind of nice. And it has horns on its head, which represent power, apparently. Sure. And uh, it has spikes going down its sawtoothed back and tail, which are made of copper and has very big paws. So it does kind of have already some similarities to the hodag with it having right. the scales and spikes all the way down its body. Um, so he could have like heard about this tail and like yeah, he, it's like it. it's if the natives played telephone long enough until eventually Eugene was born and the hodag was created. He's like, in this, this is my story now. Yeah, I, I claim it. Good. Classic white man. So I'm going to make money off it. <laughs> so classic and white man. And then say I'm a he local hero. <laughs> yep. So uh, apparently this uh, water panther or Mishi Peshu lives in Lake Superior and guards water and copper, but also brings misfortune and causes people to drown. Oh. Um, it is the cause of storms, waves, rapids, whirlpools, and breaks in the ice and water. And apparently there's a game called Mishi Peshu where apparently one kid has to catch his friends and then th well there's one kid who isn't Mishi Peshu I think like who's it who's it yeah and his friends have to catch him and throw him into the water so to, to like that sounds like, like my least favorite, favorite game something. ever so you could call upon the power to secure a good fish catch or for help like for um, healing if you believe in like the water helping you um, so sometimes he's not that great sometimes he is very great he's the master of all water creatures and he's engaged in uh, apparently engaged in eternal conflict with the thunderbirds which is the master oh, of air yeah i only bring oh. that up because i do want to cover the thunderbirds eventually i'm excited for that story. so mishi pesci might come up later so great um but yeah so apparently his arch rival is the thunderbird um stories of not praying or uh, before crossing water Ab apparently people have died before reaching land oh if you don't like give thanks to mishi peshu first for like giving you a safe travel across the water oh. there's also a theory that the description of the hodag could have been in oh i already said that it's the theory is that the hodag could have been inspired by mishi peshu right 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 so the hodag not so much a thing except a symbol of the town but mishi peshu is the local uh, creature that might either save your life in the water, kill you in the water, but regardless is probably the Hodag. And inspired a really dangerous game for children. <laughs> and that is the story of the Hodag. I loved it! I Yay! liked it! I liked it. It was a good one. Anyway. My turn to sit back and relax, Yay. Christine. Yay! Now it's your turn to keep an eye on the camera and make sure it doesn't stop recording. <laughs> All right. It'll say, what it said last time was, recording in a big letters like a black screen came up and it said recording and then that black screen went away and it was no longer recording got it so maybe keep your eye out i'll okay. do my best okay let me find my notes mm. all right so i also did um madison Mad madison notes oh, okay so if you're from if you went to the madison show i'm super sorry that... well there were two so you could have gone to one or the other oh right 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 right, right. so we probably just lost two chances to release a live show at some point but hello well that's okay um so this uh is actually a story i'm actually very excited that you did a wisconsin story because this is one that i've I had thought i had covered it and i was so disappointed because i was like i don't remember covering it but like it's so familiar and I really want to talk about it again. Then I remembered I did it, did it at a live show so I oh, can like perfect. retell it. But um, there's this uh, podcast that I've been listening to. It's like so good. It's called The Clearing. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. Um, it's called The Clearing and it's about uh, Edward Wayne Edwards. Okay. And this story is freaking Bananas? bonkers. Yes, it is wild. Edward Wayne Edwards. Yes. Okay. And um, it's a, the story of the Wisconsin sweetheart murder. So Edward Wayne Edwards in general was um, a serial killer. 
but in general, in general. But he was also a good guy. He was, uh, yeah. He brought a lot. He of, had kind eyes. That's how he got you. He got those green eyes. He also brought a lot of tourism to town. No, yeah. Oh, um, he knew where to get a good squirt gun of diluted poison. <laughs> ho daddy. He was a ho daddy. If you ever seen one. Wow. Um, when he's the sweetheart murderer, yeah, yeah it sounds yeah, like he's yeah. a ho daddy. Uh, so Edward Wayne Edwards. Um, do you guys like this? Listen, this is what you've been missing out on this whole time. This is the part. For two and a half years, we could hide the embarrassing ways that we move. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not wearing a bra. I gotta cover that up. I feel like my like, I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh god, now one's gonna be like, is she wearing a bra? No, I'm not wearing a bra. Okay. Sorry, I'm back. Everyone go look at uh, Christine's braless chest. Stop it! <laughs> you pervert. Okay, so. Just a hoe daddy. Just a hoe daddy. <laughs> You're my hoe daddy. Yay! Um, okay, so this is the story of Edwin Wayne Edwards, and um, I covered specifically Wisconsin sweetheart murders, but he uh, was prolific throughout the country. So oh, okay. It kind of, that's why I did it in Madison. Um, so a lot of this uh, information was found um, from Rolling Stone, Bustle, the Wisconsin State Journal, People.com, True Tri Crime Diary, of course, Murderpedia, and this podcast. The clearing, which is like very, very, very well done. And the guy actually talks to his daughter. Um, I'll explain it, but it's a very good podcast. So you should listen to it. All right. Um, cool. All right. So Edwards, okay. Edward Wayne Edwards was born in Akron, Ohio, which is near Cleveland. And as a young boy, he uh, had quite a traumatic past. Um, he witnessed his mother die by suicide when he was oh, very young. Shit. Okay. Uh, he had no one to raise him, so he was sent to an orphanage where he was abused both physically and emotionally. Wow, we're coming in hot on this yeah, story. Yeah, we always do, huh? N not even like a good sentence to, to warm us in. Imagine this in a comedy club. Isn't this fun? This is a, everyone's like, oh, your, your job sounds great. It's like, oh, we have to somehow be funny about some really horrific things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to make you have an enjoyable time. Yeah. Let, are you not entertained or with the significant other you dragged who's like why would you do this to me <laughs> i don't understand um so he was sent into an orphanage uh he was eventually sent to juvie uh, but he was allowed to leave in order to join the marines so he joined the marines and immediately went awol and was dishonorably discharged for that reason uh, he spent his 20s and 30s traveling around the midwest doing odd jobs such as a ship docker a handyman and a vacuum retailer a lot of odd jobs. Yeah, a lot of quite odd. In 1955, Edwards escaped from a jail in Akron and drifted around the country robbing gas stations when he needed money, quickly landing him on the FBI's most wanted list in 1961. Okay. So it wasn't just the robberies. It was that he had broken out of jail. It was that, like, oh, yeah, now you can also see how many times M. Young throughout my story. So I really, finally the truth comes out how boring I am. I, I yawn at least 20 times. It's very... I'm, you're going to get used to it. We should start doing like a counter in the... In the uh, I'm not used to it. It makes me feel very incompetent. <laughs> to be fair, I think it's psychological because for the first year that we told stories, by the time Christine always told her story, when we both had day jobs, it was like 11 at night. So I think I just still... My brain thinks like, oh, time to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Tell me a really soothing story not about murder before I go to bed. Yeah, well... Here it is. Anyway, I apologize in advance for everyone that now gets to watch me on. Yeah, finally someone else gets to witness I'm it. just a naturally sleepy kind of guy, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so da-da-da. So he is on the FBI's most wanted list. Um, he later wrote that he never disguised his appearance during his crimes because he wanted to be famous. Oh, so that's a good guy. That's rough. Uh, well, it worked, and he was pretty quickly arrested in Atlanta and sent to jail. Five years later, he was released on parole, having been, quote, fully rehabilitated. I'm doubtful. End of story. Just the end. <laughs> what if that was the end? I wish. God, if every story ended like that, I'd be If like, every story ended five minutes in and happily. No murder. Just nope. a couple robberies. Just and a lot of rehabilitation. He's all better. Yeah. He married a woman named Kay, had five children, and felt so changed, so radically changed. I, I ra radically I believe radically him. Radically believe him. Um, that he wrote a book. And the book was called Metamorphosis of a Criminal. Oh my god. In which he discussed his past life of crime and his changed ways. Mm -hmm. He also began touring the country and speaking about his reformed ways and how he saw the light and has changed to be a better person. Um, it helped that he was also like very attractive and charming, so he was just very good at like manipulating people into thinking he was truthful when he told these kinds of stories. Sure. He quickly gained the trust of his community. He convinced America that he was a changed man to the point. Let's hear it. To the point. Let's hear it. So do you remember this game show called To Tell the Truth? Mm-hmm. It's this show where three people attempt to convince a panel 
of celebrity judges that they are the central character who like either has a weird occupation or has done something really wild uh, and the other two are imposters so there's two actors and the actual person and it, it's say it's say it's like um from catch me if you can like the guy the uh, Got it. yeah and so he'll be like oh i you know forged all these checks and then the other two try to convince no i'm the one who did that oh i see okay and they have to yeah, try yeah, yeah. And, like convince the judges and then the judges will vote on who they think is actually it's all coming back yeah it's i love that show personally anyway he was on the show oh yeah did he win so three people okay Da, 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 da. So there are three people on the show. There's actually a version of it on ABC now. I don't know as of like March or whenever we did the show, but I haven't watched it. Um, my favorite episode of To Tell the Truth is To Tell the Truth. I am Edward Wayne Edwards. Oh. Reformed criminal. Okay. Yes, Edwards was on this freaking show. The episode is on YouTube, so I highly recommend watching it. It is since you're already here. Creepy. So half of the people listening. Yeah. Click here to watch. Watch. Oh, just kidding. Everyone <laughs> listening to just the audio version is like, "Oh, holy shit! Stop is this it. my new normal?" I hate it. Um, but uh, da, 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 da. oh yeah, it's on YouTube. Please finish our episode first because <laughs> I want to tell you what he did before you watch it because it's so much more disturbing if oh, you okay. watch it after. So um, half the panel voted for him. They said actually they picked him because he seemed the least likely. Read like whitest guy on the panel and so the least likely to be an ex-con and the most all-american seeming contestant so they thought oh they're trying to trick us that's him because the other two one was like this kind of like italian suave guy. guy they were like oh he looks more like a criminal like it was very insensitive i mean what are we like the 60s what year is this um the 60s 60s okay i think yeah. well maybe the 70s i mean I think it was the 70s at this point. Um, yeah, so. Interesting, there's been two different types of, uh, that we know of, two murderers on game shows. Because Night yes. Stalker, too, right? Uh, yes. Richard Ramirez? No. Oh, Alcala. Rodney Alcala? Yeah, Rodney Alca Alcala. Alcala, yeah. He was on, like, the dating game he or something. He was on the dating game, and he was a fucking psycho. And he looked like a, he looked like someone I would not want to And the other contestants those. were, like, uh... Yeah, he was a freaking creep, like, backstage, too. Mm. However, this guy was, like, so charming and all-American that they were like, wow. There's no way he's... Incredible. He was ever a criminal. Wow, he's really changed. Um, okay, so he is on this show. He's doing this tour, book tour. Like, he's just this kind of American hero. Cut to a few years later. Surprise, surprise. He's back in jail on arson charges. And um, he kind of lived the rest of his life, uh, like, kind of in and out of jail. Kept to himself. But now we're going to super fast forward to 2009. Okay. Edwards has long been out of jail. He's in his 70s. He's living back in Akron, Ohio. One of his daughters, April Belasky, April Belasio, Belasio, Belasky, Belasio. Let's go with that. It sounds cool. April. Uh, she's now a 48 year old mother of three. Uh, her kids are grown. She decides you know what, I'm finally gonna act on some nagging suspicions I've had my whole life about Ooh. my dad <gasps> and about my childhood. Let's hear it. So this is what that other podcast is about. Like her journey into like discovering all this and what happened and it's so well done. But so April, she, she always knew growing up that something was off about her dad. She said he had an obsession with the Zodiac Killer with murders to the point that he would like sit them down and make them watch all of these videos and crime things and mm. store like really gruesome graphic stuff when they were like toddlers like forced them to watch it was like sickly fascinated the other weird thing is that he would move the family from city to city every few months they never stayed in a city for more than a couple months at a time that's pretty interesting yeah she knew something was off but she had kind of repressed a lot of it she didn't have a happy childhood whatsoever um, and so she had repressed a lot of it but over time she just was like there's this nagging feeling I'm living with I, I kind of want to see if there's anything to this that I can yeah. process. So one day, so what she does is she goes, she remembers several of the small towns she lived in. And so she starts going back. Like, she's like, I know we lived there in 1978 or whatever it may be in this small town in the fall. So she goes back to like the news articles, like archives from that fall of 1978. And she starts realizing there are murders happening in those towns during the time periods that they Got it. lived there. Got it. So, 
Did you like that? <laughs> this is the real deal. I'm just gonna hold the microphone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Christ. I, we kind of knew this was gonna end up happening. Hello. That sounds better. Well, hang on a second. Is this, is this fun for everybody? No, it's not. I just wanted to, I just wanted to lean back. That's like, this is the price I pay for comfort. We were, this is the price we all pay for my comfort. Yeah, well. <laughs> Super. Elevator music. Okay. You good? Mm. We're as good as we're gonna get. Okay. All right. All right. We good? Okay. Um, da 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 da. So. She uh, stumbles upon a news report of a recently reopened cold case, and that was... Somehow you can lock it. Hmm. Good to know. Well, good to know, but we don't know it, so we're not gonna do it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. All right. We'll find out in episode two of our, of our YouTube channel. Perhaps we will. Who's to say? So, um, da da da. So she finds out about this Wisconsin Sweetheart Murders, which was a cold case in a town that she had lived in. Sure. It was the town was called Watertown, Wisconsin, and the uh, murders had taken place in 1980. So on Saturday night, August 9th, 1980, Timothy Hack and his girlfriend Kelly Drew, both 19, disappeared after a wedding reception in town. Their families reported them missing the following day, and one of the largest searches in Wisconsin history was organized. A few days after the disappearance, police began to find disturbing things on the side of the road. They found Kelly's pants, which had been cut from ankle to groin. They found pieces of rope, strange pieces of yellow tubing, and more bits of torn clothing. The tubing freaks me out. Yeah. Um, three months later, squirrel hunters stumbled upon Kelly's body in the woods, and Timothy's was 100 feet away. Mm. Uh, Kelly had been raped and Timothy had been stabbed and strangled, and after Kelly was assaulted, she was also stabbed and strangled to death. Oh my God. So leads went in all different directions. This was like horrific. This is a very small town. This was just like so shocking and jarring. It was like this young couple and very close in the community, close knit community. Um, as the years went by, investigators had no answers. The case went cold. The families just kind of lived with like, we're never gonna find out what happened. So that was in 1980. So we're back in 2009, April is searching through the archives of all these places she's lived and she stumbles upon this news report. Mm -hmm. Her blood runs cold when she realizes not only did they live in Watertown, Wisconsin in 1980, but her dad had worked at the venue where the wedding reception was held that night. Nope. Yeah. Well, that does it for me. Yeah. What's more, she remembered her family leaving town only two days after the dis disappearance oh. of the teens. Well. So at this that point, does it for me too. she's like, okay, my suspicions were correct. Yep. My dad is the worst guy. Yeah. Um, so the case had been recently reopened as a lot of cases um, have been in the last, you know, 10 years due to DNA evidence um, that can now be analyzed and funding coming in from the government to help um, open, reopen cold cases and investigate DNA. So April decided to give uh, the lead detective, Chad Garcia, a call. And uh, to her surprise, he was immediately like, okay, I'm in, let's talk about it. Oh, wow, this okay. Is like a really interesting lead you brought up because she was like, I thought they were gonna be like, you're crazy. Yeah. This random lady calling from across the country, like saying, I think my dad did it, you know? Right, right, right. Um, but uh, Detective Garcia was like, let's hop on a call. Um, and so they followed up, they talked, and the detectives ended up traveling to um, Louisville, which is where April's dad was now living, Edward Wayne Edwards. He was now 76 years old in 2009. Um, and they go to Louisville to interview him. Now, at the time I wrote these notes, I hadn't listened to the podcast, but in the podcast, you can hear the, they tape the entire interview. They show up at his house and they're like, oh, wow. oh hey, we're just, uh, we're following up on this murder up in Watertown, Wisconsin. He's like, oh, what, a murder? And it is so creepy to hear them talking to him, like knowing he did it and him pretending like, I have no memory of this. Like That is fascinating. It is gross. Yeah, it is jarring, like dark. Fascinating. It is, it is. And you can hear the whole thing and the, you can hear the detectives just playing it so chill and like, oh, okay, man, yeah, I'm sure it was nothing. We just, you know, trying to like keep yeah. him comfortable and like not spook him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it was just, it's really well done and very fascinating. Um, where am I? Shit, where are we? I hit a bunch of buttons. Oh, when I get no. excited, I start tapping and 
scrolling I know, your and little, I get your little rat, get, your little rat feet. <laughs> a little frantic. Um, okay. So, da -da 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 -da. so they show up in Louisville and they're interviewing him and um, he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I have no memory of this. He says, do you remember the couple? He says, no, I don't. I've uh, never heard of those people. Even, sure. even though like, if you had lived there and you at least would have heard about the murder, like, right. it's just a little bit off that he's like, I don't know who they are. Then investigators asked if Edwards had ever been deer hunting before. Mm, okay. And Edward said, deer hunting? No. That was the wrong answer. Because 29 years before, after Timothy and Kelly's disappearance, investigators had interviewed Edwards. They said, oh, we had discovered him. He had a bloody nose and he had been working at the venue. So they were like, hey, man, what's going on? Why do you have a bloody nose? Where were you? What was your alibi? He said, I was out deer hunting when they Got it. were murdered. Or when they went missing. I was, I was at deer hunting. That's how I got this injury. So 29 years later, they asked him, have you ever been deer hunting? He's like, no, I've never been deer hunting. Right. He forgot his own alibi. Totally one. forgot. So they had cornered him at this point. So they're like, interesting. Our statement says that you were out deer hunting and that's how you received that injury to your face. So he uh, was kind of cornered. And in the audio in the podcast, you can hear them asking for a DNA sample. They're just super chill. They're like, hey, so just like while we're here, can we get a DNA sample? And he's like, no, I watch these crime shows. I don't want anything to do with that. Like, that's too far. And his wife keeps going, no, come on. Like, if you have nothing, just like right, give them a DNA right. sample. And they're like, well, we, we'll come back with a warrant. And they make it really difficult. Finally, he gives in. He's like, okay, okay, take my DNA. And not surprisingly, it was a match to the semen found at the scene. Um, and so after almost 30 years, they had finally caught the Wisconsin sweetheart murderer. Oh, wow. And it was someone nobody had expected. Um, they interviewed the dad of uh, Kelly, the daughter who had been killed. Yeah. Oh, no, sorry, of the son, Timothy. Got it. And the dad said, like, all these years living in that town for 30 years, he just, every he said everybody he looked at, every neighbor, he's like, could that wow. person have done it? That guy's always been an asshole. Could he have done it? Like, that guy had a Can drink you imagine problem. just that paranoia for your entire Awful. life? And you never know. You're like, I can't. And then you find out after, like, yeah. decades like oh i never had anything to worry about he it was, was already just gone. he was yeah it was some random guy that like i never would have even thought about or known um so it was just very disturbing but when they did tell the dad um about the how they had found him he was like i was actually like so proud that my son had caused that bloody nose he's like i was just so happy to hear that like he had a bloody nose and so at least he went down fighting and it was right just very touching um so at this point, they had caught him, but this is only the beginning. Edwards ended up right. confessing to committing- I thought that was the end of the story. Die. He's rehabilitated again. Anyway, <laughs> he's on our uh, game show next week. No. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Um, so he ended up confessing to committing five murders between 1977 and 1996. It turns out the whole time he was on his little speaking engagement tour and on the game show, mm -hmm. talking about his former life of petty crime and how mm -hmm. much he had changed, he was an actual serial killer mm -hmm. committing murders. Yes. So the first murders he confessed to were the Wisconsin Sweetheart murders. Then he confessed to the murders of another teenage couple, so he had an M.O. Their names were Judy Straub and her boyfriend Billy Lavaco back in 1977. Their bodies had been found in a park, both having been shot point blank in the neck. Oh my God. Yeah. He okay. was convicted and received life sentences for those murders in 2010. Lastly, Edwards confessed to the 1996 murder of his own foster son, Danny Boy Edwards. Oh no. In Burton, Ohio. So Danny lived with the Edwards family in the 90s, and although the Edwards hadn't technically adopted him, the court had allowed Danny Boy to actually change his name to Edwards because he felt like he was a son. That's so gross. Yeah, it's really fucked up. Wow. Um, so Edwards admitted he had murdered Danny Boy in a scheme to collect insurance money. Quote, and with Danny, I saw an opportunity. I set it up to collect the money and ended up getting $250,000 out of it. And it was arranged, it was premeditated, it was thought out, it was planned, and that's what I did. And if you listen to the episode in the podcast, they go into much more detail. You can hear the phone calls between him and Danny Boy where he's, Danny Boy thinks that they're in a scheme together to get money, but actually, wow. actually Edwards is like laying out an audio trail, like he's recording all his own phone calls. Yeah. An audio trail of like, oh no, he went missing. Like, like it was so fucked up. Oh no. Turns out he had brought him out to ask for help, you know, picking up some 
some material building materials or something and when he turned around he just shot him right in the back of the head and um hid his body <sighs> and the skull has never been found by the way oh my he god held out on that for for the rest of his life um so he was sentenced to death so he was sentenced to death he was put on death row for the murder of danny boy in march of 2011 um it's been made clear that he did not admit to these murders out of a guilty conscience but because they had taken place in Ohio. And that's because he was facing a life sentence and he decided he was in Wisconsin and he wanted to spend his life sentence in Ohio, not Wisconsin. No offense, Wisconsin. Um, but he's- I'm sure Wisconsin's not a Yeah, they're like, take him, please, we don't God, wanna. get rid of him. So he admitted to the specifically the Ohio crimes only after being promised that if he gave information, he would be moved to Ohio. Got it. Um, so all very strategic. Only a month after his sentencing, on April 7, 2011, Ed Edwards died of natural causes at the Corrections Medical Center in Columbus, Ohio. But that's also not the end of the story. So it's believed that Edwards was responsible for many more murders than those he admitted to, especially because he only admitted to the Ohio ones so he could be moved strategically to a different jail. Um, Detective Chad Garcia, uh, who was in charge of the Sweetheart Murders case, says he's pretty confident there are at least five to seven more murders Edwards committed and, quote, who knows beyond that. So they're wow. confident that there are at least five to seven more. Um, and a lot of the podcast, I know I keep talking about this other show, I'm sorry, but a lot of the other show is, is April going through her memories and saying, I remember living in this part of town and this kid disappeared who lived on our street and like i want to see if my dad had anything to do with it and so a lot of it is can you imagine uh, like now every town you ever lived in yeah every kid that ever got hurt you're just gonna think maybe my dad maybe my dad did it responsible and like a lot of it was you know we rushed out of town in the middle of the night and she's like well there had to be a reason like right something happened and it's just very disturbing and she actually meets a lot of the relatives of the people that he murdered and so there's a lot of that of like forgiveness and reconnecting and her saying i'm sorry what my father did to your family and yeah. murdered your son and it, it's just like very heavy but like very fascinating yikes 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 yeah so a lot of experts also believe that edwards was responsible for the murder of another young couple beverly allen and larry payton in portland oregon in 1960. they were murdered on a lover's lane that's the mo and later found stabbed and strangled which was similar to sweetheart murders he had actually been questioned early in the investigation because he was in town around that time but was re released when they didn't have enough to hold him and so now there's this whole rabbit hole that has been created um, about this guy because that he moved so much and there were so many different like potential links right that can't right, right, right. fully be confirmed that people have kind of just started going on these like wild you know pin board yeah uh sprees of trying to figure out who he could be charlie day charlie day style yeah um so want to come down this rabbit hole with me because i do let's, let's bounce around it's a trip so in 2018 a true crime series came out on paramount network called it was him the many murders of ed edwards the man behind the series uh who was also interviewed on that show on the podcast is retired cold case detective john a cameron who has spent the last eight years working to prove that edward wayne edwards was the most prolific serial killer the world has never heard of oh cameron believes edwards committed upwards of a hundred murders and 100. was involved in some of the most famous murder cases of the past 70 years now this is extremely controversial because it is very conspiracy theory -y. so i mean you know down our alley but i mean yeah uh here's a list of some of the murders for which cameron believes edwards was responsible okay big breath jean benet ramsey lacey peterson mm -hmm. Teresa halbach of making a murder adam walsh son of america's uh, most wanted oh john God. walsh chandra levy jimmy hoffa martha moxley steve branch michael moore christopher byers of the west memphis three case and the black dahlia Cameron, no. okay. Cameron also believes Edwards was the Zodiac killer and that he is responsible for the Atlanta child murders. So what? he's just like, oh, every murder you've ever heard of? Yes, that was him. And I think it's one of those cases where he's started the evidence he's discovered he's using to right. bolster something he's created as a theory rather than got it. You know, and like, uh, probably not true. Just a lot of branches are coming yeah. out and they interview him. They go to his house and interview him. And, um, April 
uh, Edward's daughter is like, listen, I, I as much as you want to find out all the, all of my dad's victims, but like, I think this takes away from the case if you're saying like he murdered John Benet Ramsey and like he murdered the Black Dahlia, like he would have been like 13 right, or right, something. Right. Like it just doesn't make sense, and like I think you're taking away from from actually finding out who did it. So it's kind of controversial. A lot of people are like on board because it's just such an insane like fascinating theory sure but I mean, it, why not why not write it a little bit right, right that right. way if just to see like just to see what you can find out but and of course like you know he has facts or evidence that backs it up but then there's a lot on the other side that's like no 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 and she even said like no we weren't living there at that time and, and he was like well he could have flown there Got and it. flown back in two hours and she was like but why? It's just a lot of it is a little illogical. Yeah, and like why would he fly somewhere to kill a random person he doesn't know and then fly back? Right, he would just kill someone he, right, where he, he lives. He was already doing that. And like she she even said like as sick as it sounds like that's not his type. Like he had a type and it's pretty right. clear in the MOs of the people he murdered. They were yeah, all couples. Teenage couples. Yeah. And he would like assault the woman and murder both of them and that's just what he did. And so like the West Memphis or the um yeah, West Memphis 3 and the Atlanta child murders, she's like, it just wouldn't Doesn't necessarily matter. Doesn't matter. fit. Yeah. Like, so. I'm not saying he's not a shitty person. Right, exactly. But he didn't do all of that. Yeah. And she's like, I know how terrible he was. I'm not doubting that or denying that. But, like, we need to have some element of logic here, too. Um, so, anyway, the most absurd of all of these is the Black Dahlia accusation. Um, which we did in episode three. If you want to go back, talk about going back to our awkward phase, I guess. Right. We're just having, we're going through puberty all over again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my nightmare. Oh. <laughs> um, so experts have agreed Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, was killed by someone with advanced surgical knowledge, and Edwards would only have been 13 at the time of her death. Got it. So, so not very likely. It doesn't make much sense. Um, now, interestingly enough, the most realistic theory to come out of this six-part series is that Edwards could be the Zodiac Killer. Is that logical? So that's the most logical to come out of this, and I'll tell you why. It has actually been heavily speculated by other people, too, that Edwards was the Zodiac Killer, and April even says, I think it's, I think it's possible. Oh, wow, okay. And um, the reason being, so as we know, the Zodiac Killer terrorized the Bay Area, Bay Area in the 60s and 70s. He was never caught. Um, their entire website's devoted to this specific theory. Um, so let's humor it. Why not? Why not? That's what we're here for. Why not? The Zodiac Killer claimed responsibility for 37 murders, but has only officially been linked to attacks on three couples and a taxi driver from 1968 to 1969, which means targeted young couples, which is typically a pretty rare victim type. So if you think about it, it was a similar MO of young couples on lover's lanes that kind of thing was Zodiac Killer's MO and Edward's MO. So that's one similarity. Sure. What's more, there's evidence that Edwards lived in Northern California in the Bay Area during the time of the Zodiac killings. Witnesses often describe the Zodiac as being about five foot eight with a medium to heavy build, which Edwards was not the most, you know, compelling evidence, but it still fits. Uh, so the switchboard operator who spoke with the Zodiac, her name's Nancy Slover, um, the switchboard operator who talked to him in 1969 said he sounded like he was probably 35, like mid-30s at that point. Edwards was 36. Uh, when the Zodiac first approached young couple Brian and Cecilia, so we covered this in episode 86 also. Maybe less awkward phase, but still pretty awkward during that time of our I'm life. I'm sure. I mean, there has not been... We've it's never all been awkward, <laughs> just different levels of, of how terrible. We've never really escaped it. No. Um, so when he approached Brian and Cecilia, and Brian was the only person to survive and like had a full account of um, like what the Zodiac looked like and everything. Um, so Brian later said the man had introduced himself as an escaped convict from Deer Lodge Prison. Interestingly enough, Edward's book that he wrote, The Metamorphosis Bullshit. Sure. Mentioned serving time in Deer Lodge Prison numerous times. Oh! And this was like somewhere, I think it was in Wisconsin or like somewhere far away. It was not interesting. It was not nearby. It was not in the Bay Area. Like it was a very small random j prison in like a totally different state. So that was just Got it. a very weird coincidence. Um, and finally, for what it's worth, April, Ed's, Ed Edwards' daughter, believes... She really believes her father was a Zodiac killer. Um, there was a documentary on Investigation Discovery, and now the podcast, but it ex in which April explains that her dad had a deep 
deep, deep obsession with the Zodiac Killer. He used to make his children watch videos about the Zodiac Killer and he would just scream, that's not how it happened. <gasps> like every time something would go on, he'd be like, that's not what happened. And like, get so defensive. And they just were like, what is his deal? And now well, that back, was the most red flag, right? I've ever heard, right? I mean, and he was obsessed for his with his whole life. He had clippings, every clipping he could get his hands on of the Zodiac. Every talked about it constantly. Just was like constantly analyzing news articles in the media and how it portrayed the Zodiac killer. Was correcting every time they said something wrong. Wow, very very weird. And so she, he I, he's a Zodiac killer in my head. She, officially. I mean, she believes it, and she's already. She was able to pin him to multiple murders herself, so I'm just yeah, saying. on a hunch, on by a the hunch. way. So imagine when she's got another hunch. Let's yeah. go with it. Yeah. She seems to be pretty spot on in everything else. Um, and so Edward's DNA has not actually been checked against the Zodiacs yet, but perhaps one day it will be. And I'm really hoping for that day because that would be so... That would just add such a layer if you could combine I, this story with the Zodiac and finally... I mean, that would be quite... I'm surprised that that wasn't the first thing they did after, like, news like this. Yeah, I mean, I think, but I think the only compelling quote-unquote news is, like, she thinks he did it, mm -hmm. which, like, isn't really, sure. you know, I mean, maybe not enough. I feel like I would try, I would find it on my lunch break or something. I don't know how DNA well, is tested. yeah. I'm just pretending it takes 30 seconds. Sure. And I'm, it does, I know it doesn't. But. but, like, if you think about it, too, there's so many theories about who's the Zodiac Killer. Like, so, mm -hmm. and they all seem very, like, D.B. Cooper. I mean, there's so many that are, like... Well, like maybe, you know, so it's kind of, it's, yeah, yeah it's, who knows? there's a lot, a lot there, but I really hope that they actually do go through with that because I'd be fascinated to know. Um, so perhaps one day it'll be tested. I'm really hoping so. Guys, can you do that? Click here to do it. Click somewhere. Click here. Click on M's stupid key in the forehead. <laughs> Nonsense. My weird specific exact dot in the center <laughs> of my head. People were like, how did you do that? And I was just talking with my hands because I don't know how to do anything else. And then I realized that I like left my phone in the car or something and I went, oh no. And then I, I was like, oh no, there's- Oh, oh, ac oh, actually no. Yeah. I picture it more as like, dag nab it. And then like, <laughs> just like, stabbing Like yourself. almost wanting to like face palm or like slap myself in the forehead because I'm so stupid. And then I did it with keys, so I was double stupid. Wow, that's rough. I mean, well. It's fine. It's I'll, fine. I'll, I'll, I'm, it's I'm fine. healing. We're healing together. Emotionally. We're healing together. Um, anyway, so hopefully his DNA will be checked. Maybe someday we'll know definitively whether or not that theory is true, which I'd be interested to know either way. Um, either way, Ed Edwards is still a murderous fucking bastard. And that is his story, thanks to April, his really strong and brave and smart daughter. Yeah, wow, April. This... This one goes out to you. Yeah, seriously. She's a fucking baller. If you listen to that show, she's like, I've worked through this for years. And like, I just finally got to a point where I was like, no, I need to make it known what the fuck my dad did. Wow. Yeah. Like while she was a child. And it's just disturbing to hear her childhood. She's like, yeah, sometimes he would have us run in the woods and then he would shoot after us and <gasps> like scare us and stuff like that. Like he was- What like, the hell? He was a nut. Like he was a fucking- terrifying person. I don't even know why she claimed she had a hunch. She should, I think she was trying to be <laughs> polite. I think she was like, I know something fucking happened. Well, it worked because they took her seriously, you know? Yeah. She like didn't come off as crazy at all. They were just like, wow, okay, actually I think you're on something. So yeah, she did a great job. Um, Oof. So yeah, that's the story I've, I'm very excited I got to cover again. Yeah. That was a good one. Thank you. Yours was good too. This was a good episode, I think. I mean, we don't know. I mean, visually, who's to say? Give us some points. Percent. Give us constructive criticism. We will take it. Don't. I won't take it. I'll be, take it. Okay, I will take it. But be, don't be too mean because my feelings get hurt. Yes. <laughs> Give us positive. Pretend you're talking to someone who's very sensitive. Tell because me that's what I'm we are. beautiful. I'm just kidding. Say we're beautiful, then tell us what we should work on, then tell us we're beautiful again. Um, I guess that's it for us then. Huh? Yeah, this was fun. I mean, we did it at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope. Let's go back and see if any of this recorded. Can you imagine? It just didn't record in the whole time we're talking on audio and it's like, watch our YouTube and it just doesn't exist. Well, in case it is on YouTube and people want to find it, where can they look? And that's why we drink? Podcast? Oh, so to send people to YouTube? Yes. So we're at, and that's why we drink. Um, I think it's uh, youtube.com slash C slash and that's why we drink. It should be that. Or just, just search and that's why we drink on YouTube. It'll be there. You can also find our website, and that's where we drink.com. Yes. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at ATWWD Podcast. Click can, here. I have to figure out how to do that. Uh, you can also follow our personals, X Teen Chiefer and Liam Schultz. And uh, Patreon. Patreon. If you want to be on our close friends list, which 
You do. Maybe you do. Maybe. I, I post some weird shit. And when I'm about to make it exclusive weird shit, it's going to get that, more fun. That we tell ourselves no one will ever see except you guys. Ooh, it's going to be a trip. Um, what else? Oh, we've got an address. If you'd like to send us gifts, um, we do we do our uh, fan oh, mail yeah. videos. For Patreon. Um, so you can send your gifts to our P.O. Box. It's 1920 Hillhurst Ave, number 265, uh, Los Angeles, California, 90027. Yay! Um, yeah, what else do we have? We've got merch. We, you can find most of our stuff on our website. Yeah, and we'll also post um, about this on social media. So ATWWD Podcast, if you want to follow there. Um, if you don't want to Google us or search on YouTube or ask Jeeves, sure, we'll, we'll yeah. put it on Instagram. Send a carrier pigeon. Yeah, we'll, we'll have Jeeves take something signals. back. Yeah, um, yeah, and then oh, that's my phone ringing. That's nice. Also, you can email us. Yeah, at, and that's where we drink at gmail.com at gmail.com and you can also submit your personal listener stories yes. for our listeners episodes well, true come crime out true crime or ghosties yes and uh or cryptids or aliens one thing we are thinking about doing too for uh our new with our new patreon is people getting to pick the topics for our listeners oh, yeah. stories like the themes christine's been picking themes she's more been shouting them at eva i've been screaming them into the void and somehow they're returning to me but if you would like to submit uh either your own personal list or your own personal story for us to read on air or if you would like to come up with a theme, yeah. you can always email us. Like we've had themes like cowboy ghosts, mirrors, doppelgangers. Um, I've requested doppelgangers. I think we're going to do that one soon. So like, yeah, we might do some of those and um, see what we come up with. You guys can help us. Because I mean, the other one we came up with was cheese and like that was not helpful to anyone. Yeah. Um, uh, we also, uh, so we do have our, our last two shows of the year tomorrow in Salt Lake, but they'll be over when this comes out. Sorry. Yes. But when we, uh, that means that all you've got to look forward to now are the our official 2020 tour. We're working on it, guys. It's we actually happening. It. And it's going to be a very different format very than different. what you guys have already seen. If you've come to a live show before, um, I know we were originally doing individual stories at every individual city. Right. Our brains just can't do it. Um, we realize there's a reason why everybody else on Earth doesn't do an individual <laughs> set for every city that they go to. Um, so we have figured out something that we think is super duper cool. And the fact that like it's September and we're working, we're heavily working on this right now, starting for our tour in 2020 means like we are Don't really know. putting it together. So it should be a good time. It's going to be a fun tour. It's going to be not at all like what we've been doing. So totally different, but we're going to, um, hopefully release all those at some point and hopefully all together. So it's not like sporadically releasing dates. We're yes. going to release one big tour date. That's all the shows. Um, and when that happens, we'll post it on social media and stuff. And yeah, we're excited to meet more of you guys. We're just trying to get more streamlined while also becoming more chaotic, if you will. So <laughs> until then, and that's why we drink. Bye. Love you. Okay. Now you guys get to see the final part where I tried to turn off the stupid camera. Ooh, the duct tape's gonna fall.